Welcome back to my channel, it's Terry. Today I'm gonna to do a spotlight video on this orchid right here. This is a species, and this is a new acquisition. I uh, just picked this up uh, a couple days ago at the Missouri Botanical Garden, their spring show there. It was actually came from Nats. They have the best dendrobiums there, I tell you, if you're really looking for big, big ones specimen sized, Latourias especially. But this is not a Latouria. This is from the Spatulata group, I believe. This is an antennae. This is actually uh, Dendrobium antenatum. Now, the story with this orchid, this was actually first, first uh, um, well, it was first uh, talked about or what it was first discussed by Lin Liai in the 1800s. Um, described by Lin Liai, that's what I'm trying to say. Excuse me, I had a brain fart there. But, um, so because of that, this was one of the very first uh, dendrobiums in cultivation that was used in hybridization, specifically because of its unique uh, uh, petals and sepals, well, the sepals more so that are erect. Um, the story about this plant with me is that I had one of these a few years ago and it bloomed like mad. And then over the winter, I had repotted it and had it hang in a high light situation. And it was actually the winter that my heaters just went kaput. My heater went kaput, so it just died. These plants, well, before I start talking, let me just go ahead and show you what the literature says about it. This book is another good book. This is Orchids of Papua New Guinea. I've shown this book before. And here is what it says about Dendrobium antenatum, epiphytic on whatever that says, handy, I think handy tree or coconut palm, um, Tamara Island, uh, grouped with Lineale. Also down here, there's mention of, or somewhere, it's mention of also growing around this color, which is also a swampy lowland growing um, uh, epiphytic dendrobium. Uh, that's a antenna uh, antelope type. This is, says it's 800 meters throughout the islands. Um, so it's from lowlands, it gets a lot of moisture. Um, although it is not a mossy kind of moisture, if that's, if you understand what I'm saying. They like lots of water, but their roots are allowed to dry off in between waterings. Um, so they are, this, their vicinity is close to swamps, valleys, river, uh, ravines, coastal areas. What does this say about intonatum? Should be pretty similar. Um, okay. It says four angular stems. Definitely four angular stems. Definitely four angular stems. Then it says... New Guinea, lowland, low altitude, human jungles, New Guinea, Solomon Islands, one foot long pseudobulbs, inflorescence, grow from the top, hot growing species, must have glass house to survive outside the tropics, climate occurs throughout the year. Of course, I have a photo of the flower. It is very fragrant. Very, it's a soft fragrance, very soft fragrance. So in my dilemma about this plant, when I saw this uh, over the weekend that I was beginning to discuss in one of my live videos was the fact that I had had one of these plants and in my mind at that instance, I was trying to figure out what could I do differently that I did not do. And just in discussing uh, dendrobiums in general with gnats, we came to the conclusion that my problem was the heat. And my heat is generally the issue with a lot of my gingerobiums uh, that I have issues with in the wintertime. It's the heat. They do not like it 
um, lower than 60 degrees, come to find out. Um, now I'm looking at this other book, which is a Bible. Uh, there is the title, Illustrated Encyclopedia of Orchids, Alex Pigeon. And when I flip to the Dendrobium section, there is Antonaton, mostly large plant, Pseudobulbus stems, coarse, uh, found in New Guinea, Solomon Islands, large, fragrant, um, species flowers at any time of the year, but mostly during winter and spring. It needs lots of light, humidity, and a minimum winter temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Now that is what stuck out in my mind after I came back with the plant. That solidified what my issue is. And that actually made me go through this whole book again, paying closer attention to these minimums. Every one of these species has a minimum. And I'm beginning to think that's really very important. It's easy to give them what they want in the summer because everybody has generally rainfall, you know, higher humidity, it's more sunlight. Wintertime, it's a totally different ball game. You really have to figure that side what they want. So, and that has really been my issue, is that temperature. So this year is really a good year that I am upping my temperature. So I will probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, have more success with these kind of uh, orchids. Um, so yeah, um, something to always pay attention to. But this is a very desirable plant. The flowers last very, very long. Sometimes they can be in flower for up to six months, even longer, if kept in optimal, optimal conditions. Again, it does require a good drainage and because it does get copious amounts of water every summer and throughout the year pretty much, it does need water all, all year. It does not have a dry rest, um, just a little less, a little more drying out in between waterings, but it still needs water. And that is the most, that is another common failure of dendrobiums, especially after you repot them, because you can't ever stop the water completely. They still need the water and the heat throughout the year. So anyhow, I am going to eventually repot this at some point. I'll probably mount this, to be honest. Um, hopefully I'll get one of those ceramic cylinder pots from Natalia or somewhere. But I just thought I would do a species spotlight on this beauty right here, just because it is such an important plant and it's so beautiful and it is long lasting. If you have the space and the heat and the humidity, it does like high humidity, it does like it in the 80s, 80%. So if you can do that, give it the heat that it needs, I think it should be easy for you to grow and it will definitely uh, the fragrance will definitely entice you as well. So that is it for this video. And if you've enjoyed my video, press the like button. Again, thanks for watching. Enjoy your orchids. Bye.